What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Sunbelt Syndicate, the special edition as we get closer and closer to Sunbelt baseball tournament style action. Uh, and we have a very, very special guest with us tonight. But before we get to that, as always, thank you to collegefootballdogs.com, hammering the football coverage out right now, heavy on the EA Sports video game stuff that's come through the wire. Uh, presented Not down below. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Uh, presented down below by W Energy SB Syndicate, as always, at checkout gets you at least a 10% discount code. Sometimes they give out a little bit more, so be on the lookout for that. We are part of Dog TV uh, for all other college and uh, some baseball coverage uh, throughout some of the other leagues as well. And we want to welcome the veteran, Artie Cat. Uh, of USMC lore and Texas State super fan, as you can see behind him there, a uh, long time commenter. Uh, awesome to have him on the show because he's been with us literally since like the first episode of football. He's he's pretty much here every week, and uh, he's he just eats this stuff up, and we eat up the fact that he interacts with us so much. So Artie, thanks not only for all of that, but also being on here tonight, and we actually finally get to. Uh, Again, not really meet you face to face in real life, but at least virtually for now. <laughs> Thank you all for having me on. I appreciate it. And yeah, I just um, <clears throat> remember the day I found this on the Sun Belt on TV, college football, and been a big fan ever since. It's great. You get to see all kinds of different perspectives from coaches, players, up and coming players, and just fans in general from around the conference. And I'm just a big fan of the Sunbelt Conference. I think we're on the right track as far as the conference goes with the footprint and everything in the future. And I'm just looking forward to it. Yeah. And I had it was a great wind down to the regular baseball season this year. Came down to the wire for a couple teams. Yeah. So. Yours specifically. And we'll, we'll certainly let you yeah. touch on that. But uh, I love the fact you're repping the Southwest Texas stuff. Whenever I saw that, that was kind of before my time following Texas State, uh, of course. But – um, I do really appreciate the the stuff that they've put out because I really like a lot of that stuff there um, that they've got. And you probably spent a pretty penny to get all that <laughs> that you're wearing. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little a little bit here and there. Don't collect as much as I used to. But, yeah, I think they try to bring some of the Southwest stuff back just to try to bring back some of the older fan base from back in the day and kind of get them more involved. Of course, you know, nothing does that like winning. So the more you can do that, the more you can get them back involved. And I think the football kind of program proved that this year. We got a lot a lot more people back back involved, you know. Absolutely. So people are kind of fickle, but that's just the way sports are. Yeah, no doubt about it. Speaking of fans, we've got one of the better fan bases in all of. Oh, there college. you go, uh, the Southern Miss yep. fans. Southern Miss to the top, <laughs> right there by Buzzard Ball. So hey, look, usually Artie is the very first comment saying, "Hey, nice to see you guys." Glad to be on the show, and uh, right, right. Hey. We had we had to give that uh, that special shout out to somebody else tonight because he's literally on the show with us. Is again pretty cool, uh, Marv. I know that you uh, you want to share your little travel from the last couple days here with us. Uh, yeah, I mean you guys already know. So we went down to Atlanta to watch the uh, Braves Padres series. Uh, my wife and oldest son are big Braves fan, and my youngest son is a Padres fan for. <laughs> whatever reason i don't know we have zero connections to the state of california or san diego but uh yeah tatis. yeah he is a tatis fan uh but yeah drove down split the distance on thursday night actually stopped in augusta went to an augusta green jacket uh minor league game on thursday night which they've got a pretty nice stadium down there it was a good experience and went to the braves game uh friday night and then got in the stadium uh like i told you guys got all the all the drinks and all the food you could ever want. They go through the starting lineups and then say, "Hey, there's weather in the area. We're going to be delayed and end up uh, canceling the game last night and move it to Monday night." So I'm sitting here watching what I should have been watching uh, live last night on TV tonight. Mm. Hey, you got good company mm. though, buddy. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't cost you like ninety dollars in food, so there you go, <laughs> buddy. They will eat you alive for food and drinks in there. Yeah. Which is strange, right? Because the Falcons have gone against the grain there with Arthur Blank and, and Chick-fil-A and all of them work together for very reasonable prices right there in the same city, but they didn't seem to translate that to the ball field, huh? Yeah, whoever, whoever owns the Braves is not on that same bandwagon, that's for sure. $15 <laughs> hot dogs, $8 french fries, 
Uh, yeah, it's crazy. I was very impressed with Mercedes Benz. That that <laughs> that arena is top notch. And I was, there, but I saw it. It's, it looks looks really nice. Being the cheapo that I am, I was very <laughs> impressed with uh, free refills on all drinks inside the arena. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, like parking was pretty expensive, but drinks were free, so it all evens out, right? We all you, we all must have parking. Yeah, parking. I was just going to say the same thing. <laughs> I still, I mean, not to go, but I still can't believe they ran out of just beverage in general at the bowl game this year by halftime. I mean, I've never seen any venue do that before. And people started ordering food and alcohol from delivery companies into the stadium. I didn't know you could even do that, but they were. Oh, wow. I didn't know you could. 12 packs and people were <laughs> just ordering off of that and having to deliver that's insane. Do you do you think they weren't properly stocked, or did you guys, as a collective group, really drink that much? Like, what do you, is it a little of both, or what? It's a little of both, I believe. It was a you know, it's kind of known as a party school back in the day, uh, for sure. But um, I'm not sure they were just quite prepared. There can be that many people actually show up and be that you know, yeah. I'm not really sure about that, but it, it was. I just never had that happen before. People were yeah. pretty shocked. I mean, soda did everything. You know, oh, they so, ran out of soda and everything. Yeah, I mean, just every, I mean, pretty much oh, everything. Yeah. I mean, they had like a couple of bottles of water here or there, maybe if you're lucky. But yeah, they ran out of pretty much now, everything. I feel, like, I feel like that is a rant we would go on for sure. That's a half hour rant on this show. <laughs> <laughs> that, that sounds like poor planning. I mean, you you can't you can't run out of stuff. No. Yeah, it kind of seems like back in session airing, but you, you know, it's just he knows it's just you. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> True. Very, very true. Um, all right. Let's get into the baseball here. All right. Um, let me let me move this so we get we can see everybody better. Here we go. That's a little bit better of a setup there. Uh, so, yeah, this is tournament special, guys. Uh, we know that it's starting Tuesday. Uh, we'll get into the matchups as they go. I actually started a little backwards today. I'm going to go through some of the scores first with you guys. Probably not a whole lot that's really shocking. Um, a few surprises. Probably Artie's got his team listed as, as a surprise there, although it was obviously a tough matchup. But this first one here, neither team's making the tournament. We knew that going into this weekend. It wasn't possible for either to jump up there. Uh, I guess the only thing that shocked me at all in this is that ULM swept them. And I thought Arkansas State could probably take at least one game. But I don't know. Thoughts, guys, on that one? I mean, I know there's not a ton to continue talking about with, you know, the season's ending. Yeah, they just basically flip-flop positions from 23, 2023 to 2024, basically. They just went from – Arkansas State went from 12 to, to last, and they just flipped it around this year. So, yeah. They were. Tough year for they were. Yep, they tough were. Yeah. Now, I'm, we got a little excited to begin with, but not much. Yeah, they uh, what well, they jump out nine and zero, Arkansas State to, to begin the season. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm with you. I'm, I would have thought that Arkansas State could have got a game, um, but uh, sweep sweep to end this uh, end the year's never good. But no, no. Two teams aren't going to make the tournament. That's uh, I don't want to minimize it, but kind of irrelevant. Right, exactly. I mean, it, I will say the. The last game there, the seven to six game, was a walk off hit. It wasn't in extras; it was just in nine. But the Warhawks did hit. Uh, I just I don't think it was even a home run or anything, but I think it just went deep into the outfield to score a run to to go up uh, seven six and end the game. So I mean, Arkansas State was right there in the last one at the very least, even though it doesn't look like they were in the other yeah. two all that much. But yeah, uh, two teams who are going to be look to really rebuild, uh, continue to rebuild, like you said, Artie. I mean, these teams were already at the bottom last year. They just flipped spots this year. There's still a lot of work to be done for both programs. So neither one will move on to the tournament, uh, but these two teams both will. Uh, and uh, an interesting game or, or set of games to me here, um, not the fact that South Alabama got one. That's That's not ultimately – Super surprising. The Cajuns had wrapped up first place by the time that happened. Um, not a, not a ton to play for as far as I, I guess at that point you're playing for a seed in the national tournament. You're, you're you're hoping to be playing yourself into a hosting kind of position. Um, but ten nothing. That that second game there stands out to me. I mean, yeah, that, I just didn't see a ten zero game coming. Right. I mean. A hard fought six five one to start with. If the Jags won four to two in the next one, I wouldn't be surprised at all. But ten to, ten to nothing was was a surprise to me in that. 
Well, I had South Alabama as my the biggest surprise, my most improved team for the year, for like pick. Uh, you know, last year they finished uh, uh, let's see South Alabama number eleven, and this year they were able to uh, move up to number nine. And what really helped them out, they were able to improve, you know, fourteen to sixteen in their conference record. So that helped you help help them a lot. Uh, but yeah, I had them down as the most improved team this year. Yeah, you and the the coaches, if you guys remember too. Um, all three of you, really, before we started the season, the coaches actually had South Alabama jumping up into the the middle of the pack, like they like they ended up. Um, I, I think they had them a little bit higher as far as like predicted order of finish, but you know, still, right. again, making into the tournament, so it's, it's an improvement. Um, Seth, Marv, you guys got something on this one at all? And a winning record for the year is an improvement for thirty one to twenty four. So, yeah, True. it's a big improvement from last year. They were only twenty three and thirty one. So, Whew. yeah, made, you know, good strides this year. Absolutely. Uh, are kind of irrelevant to what the series was, but I was sitting here looking at Rage and Cajuns. Uh, are we thinking there's a chance to host, or are we thinking we're going to have to win a tournament to have a strong shot? Maybe make it to the final game. Uh, once again, we can get into the RPI discussion. On, I know we'll probably show it here in a little while. Uh, mm-hmm. I think I mean, obviously if they win, yes, they should they should host. Uh, I think if they get to the championship game, in my opinion, they've done enough. But um, once again, somebody gets paid big bucks to make those decisions, not us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, forty win team. I think they got a heck of a shot. Even if, like Marv said, even if they don't win the championship, if they def- they win it, I mean, I, I don't think I don't know how you don't give them one. To be honest with you, right? Because. No, you and NCAA may not think this way. I think somewhat they do, though. Can they fill up the stadium? Right? Is this a place that that packs it out? Yes. The answer is categorically, you know, yes. So there's not a hard thing about like, well, we could have them host, but they don't really, you know, they have a big stadium. They don't usually sell out. No, it's not a concern. So yeah, I think if they get to 40 wins and they win the Sun Belt Championship, shoe in to be a host. Um, but yeah, I think they could also be a host without winning it as well. Just have to have a, some things go their way. Yeah. Same here. And they deserve it. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, what it, uh, well, we'll touch on it. 16-game win streak at one point this season. I oh, don't know if anybody in the nation had one longer than that at any point. So, uh, Yeah, and not to – and uh, one, two, three, four, five – wait, wait, get that right. One, two, three, four, yeah, five, five conference sweeps. Whew. Yeah, that's a lot. That's impressive. Yeah, I went Very through a lot. I don't have a slide for this part, but I went through and covered all the streaks for tournament teams. Longest win streak, longest losing streak, and how many times they had back-to-back losses. I felt like back-to-back losses is a big deal here um, because, obviously, two losses, yeah. you're out. Right? Except the play-in games, obviously, one you're one and done in that one. But anyway, uh, we'll, we'll touch on that once we get into the, the tournament matchups. Before we do that, Coastal Carolina finally gets hot right here at the end. Again, you're playing – a team that's down and out in Marshall. We knew they weren't making the uh, the postseason here, but uh, they do sweep them. Uh, yeah. Is anybody specifically Seth uh, yeah. thinking the tides have turned a little bit for the shots <laughs> before we get going into tournament time? That's a sneaky series. You know, we've we've been down on Coastal for the last month, and now we're still down on Coastal a little bit, but they're coming off a a sweep that is a little surprising. So. I think they're a little dangerous. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see them make a run. And then again, I wouldn't be surprised to see them, you know, at least win one in the tournament. But it, Correct me if I'm wrong. They're in the play-in game. If they lose Tuesday, that's that's it. They're done, right? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm with you, Seth. I could see them making a run to the final. Or I could see Tuesday them packing up and going back to Conway. Yeah. Yeah. And you I think Martin hit on it last week. Do you use – you kind of have to set up your pitching through the weekend for Tuesday, you know? So yeah. it just kind of it's, depends on what they look, you know, maybe use your midweek guy on Tuesday. Uh, I, I don't know if they played a midweek game. Um, I, I'm they trying, did. Remember Clemson? They, Clemson, Clemson got, got canceled. canceled. That's right. They got canceled. So, I mean, if I was a coach, which uh, – not at this level, obviously, but I would have I would have pitched my Tuesday starter on Friday night, and I would pick my Friday starter for the first game because you're not going to you know your Saturday and Sunday guy if you pitch them in order they're not pitching Tuesday, and I think if 
you pitch your Friday starter on Friday, you're only going to give him four days rest in the tournament. I don't think you do that. So, yeah, I would have pitched my Tuesday guy on Friday, save my Friday guy for the first day of the tournament, and hope that your Saturday and Sunday guy could be ready later in the week. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And we, yeah, and just, yeah, just a, another, just that was just a rough year for Coastal. Last year they were first place, 42 wins. And this year, all the way down to seventh place, which is only 33. Yeah. Fell out of the top 25. Uh, I just don't know if I can see him making a deep run in the tournament this year. Yeah. I, I think that's that's my question for them. Is, Come on, Artie. They're coastal, though. That's <laughs> yeah. their, name, their, their name's coastal. I mean, they're supposed to be field, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I got to question the consistency. We'll cover that when we get to the matchup. Um, I, I think they can win a one one off game. I, I don't think they will lose, but you know, obviously that anything can happen in those. Um, so yeah, we'll it's, it's baseball. They could beat anybody on any given day, but can you consistently right. do it? You know, three, four, five games in a row. Yeah, no doubt about it. Um, this one, as a couple of us have on, was a, a little bit of a downer. Started hot. I mean, what a what a day. For Banks Tully, former uh, Sunbelt Syndicate guest who got the received the Sunbelt Syndicate bump like a week late, but that's okay. It still came in the end there. <laughs> three home runs, three in one game. Um, you know, in hockey, as Artie knows, they call that a hat trick. I don't know what they call it in baseball, but uh, <laughs> did he end up with 23, 24, or something like that on the year? He got four in the series. I think he ended up with 25 for the year. I think it was a 21 wow. moment to do it. Um, I can tell you this, if I'm Georgia Southern's coach after that first game, I go to my pitching coach and I'm like, don't you throw that guy another pitch. You intentionally nope. walk him. Every time he comes to bat, do not throw him another pitch. Uh, he'd probably wear one if it was me. But um, <laughs> <laughs> the kid for Georgia, what's crazy, he he's, he's on – there's a possibility he ends up with 40 through the tournament and everything. That's insane. That's not that insane. Why? Why are people pitching to him too? What I I don't understand. Yeah, I don't know. I would uh, if I'm the NC two A. I'm having that guy pee in a cup before the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> Four, yeah. I mean, you got major league baseball players that don't hit that. <laughs> he's young in sixty. He's he's the Sosa McGuire all to himself over there. Is anybody really close to him? I mean, Banks might be one of the closest to him, but is anybody else touching forty or close to? I'm looking that up right now. Okay. Are you going so to ask, let me uh, ask y'all this right quick. Yeah, yeah. In the App state sixth place last year or in 2023, sixth place this year, almost an identical record, except for a tie. You could have been one game worse or one game better. Mm-hmm. I know y'all mentioned like this, you know, no one expected app state to have like a breakout year, but you're staying consistent. When, when do you think, you know, with some of these teams now falling off like Texas state coastal, I think, I think I mean it's a little early to tell because you still got the offseason, but maybe App State could start to put together a top five run here. Yeah, I, I agree. Up. I think we had we had Bryce Blevins on last week, Artie, and he spoke on Marshall, you know, coming up through the ball bouncing one way or another. And I think there's a few, there's probably five or six teams right there in the middle. The ball bounces one way or another. That's three more wins on the year, you know? It's, yeah. At least you're, you know, let's be honest, at least you're not losing MRO or Arkansas State. So, like, right there you're in the staying, middle. You know, yeah, you're not trending in the wrong direction. Yeah, you but still – you still, even. Yeah, I, I think our program's actually headed in the right direction. Um, I hate the the transfer portal and how you kind of have to, like, reset your roster every single year. But then yeah, every you, single, you, that's the thing is you just never know what's going to happen between now yeah. and then next year. Now we we've benefited from it though. I mean, you look at some, you, know, you look at Bank Sally transfer, yeah. Saint Laurent transfer. Um, but boy, boys, we man. we won our first away series in like five years this year. Yeah. Uh, we won three series in a row, which I'm not sure if that's ever happened. Um, I mean, I think we're I think we're on the right trajectory. Uh, so to answer your previous question though, um, so Condon from Georgia has 35. Then you got a guy from Moorhead State at 31, and Banks Tolly, number 10 in the nation, 25 homers. Nice. Yeah. You got two guys over 30, and then a bunch of dudes in the mid 20s. Okay. Dang. Yeah, I did I did see uh, going through, uh, and I got some other statistics on uh, conferences and how many 30 win teams and how many 40 win teams they all had. And I was surprised to see Moorhead State up there with uh, 30 plus wins because I just didn't know they were 
you know, good baseball program. It, maybe they are not historically, but they're definitely good this year. Um, so, and I'm sure that guy's a large part of the reason That's why. It helps when you got a guy that's hit 31 yeah. bombs. <laughs> yeah. Talk yeah, about this when you're a little bit of a letdown. Uh, yeah. Yeah. A little bit, a little bit strange timing as well, I think, because, you know, I think we started, was it a rain out on Thursday? No, you had a double yeah. header. Thursday. Double header on Friday and then an early start on, no, 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 no. Yeah. Double, double Thursday. Double header on Thursday, early start on Friday, no game yeah, on yep. Saturday, correct? Yeah, eleven a.m. Yep. start on Friday for the for the rubber match, and that was a game that was it was a close game for most of it. I think Georgia Southern uh, busted it open a little bit late, but um, Dom, it's like we text as an app fan, it sucks to lose to Georgia Southern at absolutely anything, whether it be football, baseball, field hockey, doesn't matter. Hate losing to those guys. Um, wish them nothing but the worst in the tournament. <laughs> now let's let's talk about i mean but it, they ended on a two-game win streak so this wasn't an alternating win thing and then the, the last game was up for grabs so um you know i mean i guess technically it was but georgia southern <laughs> wins the last two to win the series two one so they're they're going in on a two-game win streak after yeah. run rolling them in one and you know coming out four runs on top in the in the last one so they're kind of coming in a little bit strong when you're talking about a team that Again, this series could have greatly helped the fluctuation of the standings, honestly. The app could have finished all the way up in um, – I believe they could have jumped Troy had enough good things happen. Um, but there it is. I mean, so Artie's talking about App State you know, being consistent. They, they could have even been higher in the standings. Or Georgia Southern could have been higher if they would have swept this series, you know. Um, so we'll, we'll take a look at the standings here in a minute. But um, yeah. I'm going to blame the tie against Arkansas State for everything. Yeah. Yeah, you got the only the only tie of the year. <laughs> yeah. That would be oh, no. one game. You you yeah, you're one game behind them. So that's true. But the the tie in the the way that it could have worked out might have actually favored them. Yeah. When it comes down to the same amount of wins, then you go to the losses, and they don't have as many losses, so they could have actually benefited from the tie. You know, obviously more from a win, but the tie didn't really hurt them, uh, especially how they ended up finishing, but even if they were kind of tied up with another team, um, it would have essentially helped them in this case. All right. So speaking of Troy, uh, we weren't, uh, but they, (laughs) they were up at the top. Jamie, you really needed this to kind of stay up there in RPI to stay up there in the standings because that was, they were part of that log jam there. uh, And they got it. I mean, they, they won the series before some, uh, Saturday's final even happened. Anyone shocked that Troy didn't put up more of a fight in this one? Yeah, I am a little worried about Troy, honestly, going into the tournament. I had him as my tournament sleeper there. Um, they didn't look at that impressive against the Bobcats. And GMU is not a bad team, but I honestly expected Troy should have took two out of one on this. But, you know, yep. JMU is not a, not a bad team at all, obviously. Nope. So. No, uh, I really can't be surprised. I, I thought Troy would have took two out of three from them. Um, not super surprised. I mean, JMU, they swept app. They've been yeah. high up there on RPI the the entire season. But um, where was this play? Was this in Alabama? Yep. In Troy. Alabama? Alabama. Yeah, yeah, Troy. That, yeah, that makes me a little bit more uh, shocked that, that Troy didn't get two out of three. That's, that's what was the most surprising. The and everything. Yeah. yeah. Seth, what would be your thoughts? Was Troy Seed already locked up on this? No. No. Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. then, yeah that is a little bit more surprising. I, I don't agree. know. They couldn't have jumped to number one or anything. Uh, Louisiana yeah, I, had that lock. I think I think it was locked. I, I don't think they No, could. yeah, I think it – yeah, you're right. Mar- I don't I think, think they could have was. jumped Southern Miss either. I think that they I were – I think Lafayette and Southern Miss had those on lock. Then, oh, okay. I think maybe the the, the theory is if, if you're already locked up, like going back to Coastal – I think you you already start budgeting your pitching a little bit through the weekend if <clears throat> if you kind of already know what you're getting set up as, if that makes sense. Yeah, that does. Yeah, so well, they might could have gone in the bullpen or something. I didn't see the game in person, but you know, yeah, they could have went, yeah, with some different guys for pitching and saved some of their arms or whatnot. Yeah, I, I will say maybe they couldn't have jumped up, but they could have gone down. Yeah. No, they, they by the again by Saturday's game they knew that wasn't going to happen. Yeah. Actually, let, let let me let me refrain from that. They played that first game Thursday. They had a rainout Friday, and they had a double header 
on Saturday. So they by then they did know in the last two games they knew everything because everybody else was pretty much completed at that point. So yeah, you you guys are right. They probably knew what they could afford to do I, by the I time think, this game went. I think with Georgia Southern being fourth, when Georgia Southern lost the first game to App, Troy only had to win a game. Okay. To stay third. Gotcha. You'd be incorrect on that, but I think that's the way it was. That makes sense. Artie, do you want to take this one first, man? <laughs> oh, and I mean, it it hurts. I mean, they had the they had it in their hands, you know, to win or to get in or to lose, and that they just couldn't do it. It was just a rough, rough year for the team. And really, what it came down to is we just weren't hitting home runs like we used to. Uh, we went from what eighty three home runs last year to only fifty one this year. Jeez. So they really did live and die off of the, the long ball, getting the bases loaded up and being able to hit it out. Um, statistically, the pitching wasn't worse than last year or any previous years. It's just when they gave it up, it's at the wrong time. Mm-hmm. And get behind after that. And it's hard to dig yourself out of a hole, especially against a, anybody in the conference, especially against Southern Miss or somebody yep. like this. And it was just a down year. So I, uh, it's not what the fans expect here. Believe me, it's not what probably even the coaches or the players expect, but uh, there's always next year. That's baseball. So, yeah, that's baseball. Yeah. That's the theme this year. That's baseball. That's it. Uh, yeah. yeah um, and Southern Miss is Southern Miss. Uh, we'll see what they can do in the tournament. They can kind of, you know, I haven't been overly impressed with them all year, but then again, I'm not, I'm never unimpressed with them. So, you know, we'll, yeah. we'll see what happens in the, in the tournament. They get, obviously, them and Lafayette will get the, that always helps. Yep. So, but yeah, like yeah, you say, cool. about it, Texas State's obviously, I got them down as uh, the biggest disappointment of the year. That's, I mean, uh, it, you went to 10th place in the standings, but let's be honest, it's really number 11 because you're, you're not in the tournament. So, right. uh, uh, yep. yeah, just uh, to fall out of the top five like this from a team that's consistently up there in the top five and expectations, it's a hard blow. Yeah. I had uh, Texas State as a as a um, very likely or very possible tournament team before the season started. I thought they yeah, could have absolutely. been one of the four or five that we had a chance to get in there. Um, so I, I would agree with you. They'd be my number one on the list for for disappointing team. Um, but, yeah, it, it, it is hard when you leave it up to that last game in Pete Taylor Park <laughs> down there. Yeah. Um, where they don't lose often and they don't lose a lot in a row. So that first and, loss uh, was – the other team, yeah. what was it? I think Georgia or Southern or somebody or Old Dominion. Who was it? I, they had to lose. I went and checked on that game. They were winning something like 16 4. So I was like, okay, it's all up. It's all up to the Bobcat. They have to, you know, pull this through. And they just, yeah, couldn't do yeah. it. Yeah. Pitch yeah. Two opportunities. They, they were yeah. close games, respectable games. I mean, 6 3, 5 3. It, you know, no blowouts in this one. So, you know, they were, yeah, they, I mean, both they, teams were fighting. They, yeah, they played close. I mean, at least it wasn't a run rule or something like that, but yeah. it still hurts, man, not to make the tournament. And, um, yeah, just a real blow. But, like I said, that's baseball, and you just got to move on. And hopefully we'll get some good recruits here. I know they've been working on that. Coach Trout's good. I don't think anyone's, like, uh, get rid of him or anything. You know, uh, just something happened after that Lafayette game. We just never recovered from that sweep. You could just never get back on the road and just kept going in the ditch, get back on the road and back in the ditch again. So, yeah, you know, you yeah. get in baseball, you have to be consistent, especially in this conference. Oh, yeah. I mean, no so. doubt about it. Do you yeah. guys get to take in any of this one? I know well, you guys both had busy weekends, but I just, I didn't know. I think I turned one on for a little bit. Um, I think it was so late in the game by the time I got it on. I, I, I didn't really watch much of it because I think it was like the bottom of the ninth or something at one point. So right. I, was like, yeah. I, I missed it. Um, but yeah, I mean, Southern Miss up where I thought they'd be. Texas yeah. State, not where I thought they'd be. I mean, that's kind of the simple answer to, to the answer to the question on that one, I guess. Um, unless you guys got anything else, we'll move on to the series that ended up being very important uh, because of that last battle. It was ODU it and is. Georgia State, Ooh. which – Interestingly enough, you know, they lose the series two or they lose the series as well, two games to one to ODU, yeah. but they actually jump into the tournament because of the tiebreaker, which we'll cover here in a minute. But anyway, I mean, look at that last score, 20 to six, run, run ruled 
as they're going to bounce their or back their way into the tournament. So I, I don't know. And what they wanted make. it more. You got to give give them credit. You know they they wanted it more. So kudos to them. Uh, yeah. Hey, another good addition for the Sunbelt ODU's been. So even in yep. baseball here, so you know kudos to them. They wanted Absolutely. it more. What can you say? Randy Kent is saying that uh, Southern Miss had to come from behind both games, actually. So, Artie, you were probably aware of that, but I was not aware that they were behind yeah, you guys there. Yeah, um, wow. yeah, yeah, they did. But this year with the Bobcats, you just never even take that into consideration. It's going to be a head's gonna matter much. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Artie's just straight to the point. <laughs> I mean, that you can't, that's not going to make you rest easy in the dugout. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. All right, so the bus block boys are in. You know, all it takes is get to announce that a new stadium is coming and you perform. A, it's not even that they performed all that much better, really. Uh, you know, they had two close games and then they got run rule. But because of how they performed earlier in the season, they're in the tournament. So anyone surprised by that outcome, I guess? I, I don't I don't think I am. But you know. No, good for ODU, though. Yeah, the biggest surprise is 20 runs. I mean, that's uh, yeah. uh, in seven innings, too. I mean, they were uh, obviously seeing the ball very well. Yeah. That that feels like uh or sounds like that uh Duke App State game we were at, Mark. <laughs> that never happened. <laughs> no, I think Austin was talking about that. I think in his mind that Duke Duke uh App State game is still going on right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they just had another home run. Yeah, that yeah, that fifth inning is still going on. Yeah. Oh man. Randy says, hate to poke the Bearcats while they're down here. He, okay, I was going to say, I, did he do the Bearcats thing on purpose? And then he, he's correcting himself here. Sorry, Bobcats. <laughs> oh, because the best <laughs> – got, yeah. um, got it, got it. I thought that was another little uh, jab there, you know, kick them while they're down there. But he, I, not purposeful, it seems like. Um, but anyway, so, Marv, you're crowned our champion for this year. One yeah, game buddy. over 500. But hey, yeah, no. we'll take it. That is enough. <laughs> what, do I, what, what do I win? Um <laughs> You win not having to cover our costs to do Hey, does this. he get dubbies? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I get a free thing at dubbies. Yeah, there you go. There That's you go. Cool. Hey, where, we, where are we at when Yummy Yum gets us done? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our other sponsor, Danos, as uh, Artie knows so well from the football season. I try and keep it to, like, one sponsor. At some point, we're going to put, you know, we're going to have more than one. Um once they start throwing money at us, you know, then we'll put their commercials on here. Everything, you know. Hey, my, my uh, but anyway, Danos. my wife's got Danos in the spice cabinet. Hint, hint, Danos, throw us some cash. We're broke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working that one right now. Um, I'm trying. Trust me. I think that that's just a perfect match. Match made in heaven. You know, like Danos seasoning, tailgating. You know, I, well, I, I, I think yeah. it's too easy to to not do. Anyways. Um, Back to this, Marv, you've got the the two games or two series that you called perfectly. And then that other one you almost had if you just flip it, you know. Um, so I stand by my picks. There you go. But the yeah. one he got wrong, I would have took the same way. I did take – no, I took the sweep. Took a sweep. <laughs> yeah, sweep. <laughs> I took the sweep, yeah. I, I, call, I called it the same way. Um, but I had a lot of catching up to do. I, I think I made it a little more respectable towards the end. I got a little closer. Kinda, to the set. You took a sprint there towards the end there. Yeah. yeah. Bad start, though. Really bad start. <laughs> I think I was like one or two wins for a while. Um, well, I was impressed again, with the kids' picks this year. That was impressive. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. really, I mean, yeah. I mean, some of those kids got the future in Vegas on making or something. You know, <laughs> yeah. Really good. Don't let Mason near your, uh, your sports betting apps, Marv. Yeah, actually, I need to give him my phone so I have at a kid. Actually, yeah, that, 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 maybe you should let him have it. That's true. As soon as, oh, as, as my money, he probably starts making terrible picks and we lose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's some guy knocking at your door at three in the morning. <laughs> Mason said you're good for it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's Monday. It's payday. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. So, yeah, congrats, Marv, on that. Uh, not easy to do. As we know, we, we grade pretty hard here. Don't just pick the winner. You pick the series. Yeah. Wins and losses, too. So, already we got to get you involved on one of these. Doesn't yeah. mean anything until you win it again next year. Yeah. <laughs> true. True. Yep. It's very cyclical. we got to get Artie as a special guest picker, too, here in the future. I, I don't know if we want to pick for this tournament because they're so fast and they're like one-day turnarounds. Um not series either. So maybe we'll just save that for regular season stuff, but 
Hey, here are the standings as we see them. This one is corrected. Um, as we've said many times, the Sunbelt website is not correct. They are not doing, oh. for whatever reason, they're not doing the tiebreakers to show you what the seeds would be. They're only showing you the tiebreaker as if it's overall record, which maybe the NCAA leans heavier towards. I'm not sure. But for conference seeding, this one is going to be how you go. And this one's going to show you. Again, it worked out really well when I did this graphic that I ran out of room after the first two columns, and the four on the most right are the ones that aren't going to be in the tournament. Um, unfortunately for Artie, as he sees his Bobcats sitting over there, even though they had that tied record with Georgia State, they lost the tiebreaker due to common matchups. So only one of them played Louisiana. Yeah. Already talked about that. So you have to throw that out. You can't use a team that uh, or a matchup that both teams didn't play. So you had to move down to Southern Miss, which Georgia State beat two games to one. Uh, Texas State lost one or two games to one to them. So that's that's the tiebreak. It's it really came down to the, that simple. Um, the other tiebreak was between James Madison and Georgia Southern. That was a simple head to head matchup. JMU swept Georgia Southern. So they easily took that head to head uh, in order to jump them in fourth place. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's how the rest of it lays out. As you can see, we have what was it? Eight 30 win teams. Is that what I see there? Eight thirty-one wow. teams and three thirty-five-plus mm-hmm. win teams. Pretty. Uh, we've talked about this all year about how kind of Sun Belt, you know, doesn't get the respect probably that it deserves for baseball because uh, you know we get the P five moniker for, or excuse me, the G five moniker for football. But um, man, I think you take take any middle of the pack Sun Belt team and throw them into any conference, and they could be competitive in any series. And I, I don't think you can say that about a lot of uh, a lot of conferences. So. Uh, it was a fun year. Uh, you know, the cream kind of rose to the top there at the end. Uh, but once again, like, hell, Coastal. But Coastal and the ACC, I think they'd be all right. Yeah. 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 I mean, we saw that match up with a couple people early on. Just to touch on it, um, you talked about 30-win teams. I went through every conference last night. I'm not going to put go through all of them. I didn't put a graphic together through this, but did want to mention it. So the Sun Belt is fourth overall with eight 30 win teams. The only conferences above them, not shockingly, ACC, the SEC, and uh, the Big 12 actually has nine, which last year I thought the Big 12 and the Sun Belt were pretty on par with kind of like overall standings, teams, the quality of teams. Um, and they still are close because even though they had nine 30 win teams, they had no 40 win teams. And again, Sunbelt has the Raging Cajuns up there with 40 wins, exactly 40 wins. Um, but that is also tied for fourth. So only four conferences had a 40 win team or more. Uh, obviously, ACC and SEC were the only ones. Uh, I'm sorry, actually. Somehow, Conference USA only has four 30-win teams, but two of them have won 40-plus games. Wow. Was that ECU and Tulane? No, they're not in Conference USA. Conference they're in American. Yeah, they're good. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. They're in the American. Um, I can check that while we look there because it was surprising. I'm trying to think now Conference was USA. before it pops up. That yeah, I don't Conference know. USA. Ah, yeah. Conference USA what, is irrelevant. One's going to trick you because yeah, it is. I just yeah, saw the well, day that they added. One's going to trick you. Southeast Missouri State or somebody into the conference. Uh, this, yeah, Missouri like State last week or something. Like no, I never. Yeah, they, okay, they, this they, needs they, to stop. Junior Conference USA. Yeah, stop. <laughs> yeah, stop, stop bringing in these teams. So, La Tech, forty win team. That, okay. That's not surprising. I just kind of forgot that that's where they're at. To be honest with you, but Everyone the one that's surprising. That. Yeah, this one that's surprising is Dallas Baptist because they're not in there for football or, uh, you know, uh, other sports. So Dallas Baptist is in this Conference USA for baseball. Yeah, I would uh, not have known what conference they were in off the top of my head, to be honest. I knew they were a good team. I just did not know they were in Conference USA. Do you know what transfer Dallas Baptist got in basketball this year? I won't say it. I won't say it on on the air, but uh, he was from App. Oh, was it your boy? Yeah, it was my boy. Oh, Savion Brown. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) Good so, for them. Favorite basketball player. Good for them. Oh, Anyways, yes. Sorry. sorry. But, yeah. um, Yeah. But, again, the 30-win team thing uh, was impressive to me. I mean, being fourth in the country, 
of all conferences. Now, I will say, you know, some conferences performed well without having the numbers. I mean, the Sun Belt is 14 teams. There's conferences like the A-Sun who don't have as many teams who still had two 30-win teams. Just as an example, there's a few of those types of conferences that have a lot less teams that still had a good number of 30-win teams. So percentage-wise, they did pretty well. But you're talking about the quality all the way through here. And like Marv was saying, you, you put some of these teams – in another conference, and they're still going to perform pretty well. They're not going to yeah, get blown yeah. out of water. I mean, and we saw – I mean, I literally in person saw Coastal go to UNC and end their home win streak that yeah. la- that was from last season. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they're not intimidated to go into these other places and play. Already seen it down there in yeah. Texas um, as they match up a lot with some of the bigger programs within their own state, which Texas has like 32 teams for baseball, I'm sure. <laughs> and I absolutely think we'll probably take over the Big 12. Let's be honest, once the Big 12 loses Texas and Oklahoma yeah. in baseball, I fully expect the Sun Belt to uh, exceed the Big 12 in baseball. Uh, yep. I mean, they'll have a few teams here or there, uh, but they're not anywhere near consistent as the Sun Belt teams year after yeah, year. So That's a great point. Um, and you're also uh, – That's a common – they're huffing ether still. They still think they're very relevant. Um, you know, <laughs> no. But um, – you know, them in the ACC. So, you know, I fully expect us to be better than the Big 12 by leaps and bounds next year. Like I said, they'll be losing their, they're really their two heavy hitters. That's a good point. Yep. And Big, big uh, not Big 12, uh, Pac 12 uh, also will Pac- be. Yeah, yeah losing Pac-12. a lot of their. Yeah, they'll be losing a lot of their. Um, uh, again, the Mountain West has, you know, here there are some pretty good teams out there. And some of the smaller conferences out West produce some pretty good baseball teams around, but. Uh, I, I mean, I just, again, I think the Sun Belt is just really one of the better baseball conferences in the country. We should, I think we should need a, a little bit more respect than we would get. But I think as long as we keep performing uh, just a few more years here, we're going to keep getting that respect. And we'll finally, I think, break through, especially with this new realignment coming through. We'll see what happens with all that. But yeah, yeah. unfortunately, yeah, it will think- affect baseball here or there somewhat. Right. I do think that they, they, they need to look at that um, because – I don't think all the, the P5 and G5 monikers fit like all the way across for all sports. And no, like you said, already due to the realignment, this conference has become a lot stronger in baseball. Um, it wasn't necessarily always this great, right? I mean, Southern Miss was a massive addition as far as baseball is concerned. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So, I mean, and JMU's come in and done pretty well right away. ODU's had some good seasons. In fact, ODU had a better overall season last year um, as far as uh, the overall record. I think their conference record is real close to what it was last year, um, but their overall record was like 35 wins, um, but they just in the mm-hmm. conference couldn't get it done. So, I mean, ODU's done pretty well too. And, and to mention that they'll be in a new ballpark within a year or two as well. So does their you know, recruiting the pick saying, up? Uh, uh, you know, rising tide raises all the ships. So yep. you bring in better competition that forces you to get better, whether you want to or not uh, for the, for the most of the teams that can uh, ULM. And so I love ULM. They're, one of the most loyal teams to the Sun Belt. You can say, well, that's because they can't ever leave or they can't, couldn't, <laughs> but they've always held in there. They've always been in the conference. So I always got a little soft spot for them. But kill some of these lowers, it's just the, the budget. They have a low, low athletic budget. And it's hard to compete on an $11 million athletic budget. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think App State's, you know, they just released some of the uh, things this week. You know, I think App State's up at the top around 40 mil. You know, when we started getting around 10 mil or something to try to run a Division One sporting program it's going to be a little difficult for them yeah uh, i but, believe you know they've had they've had had success you know you gotta remember 2005 they were ch- i mean it's a while ago but they have done it yeah I mean, they and they uh mm-hmm. i believe they're still the lowest funded program in the country as far as a d1 program. So. yeah yeah that that's got to be tough and they're also not in not only are they not in a major market they're really nowhere close to any anything no, major market they, uh, yeah, it's pretty far out in the middle of nowhere. Or they can't get some more of that Doug Donnessy money. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's La Tech, isn't it? No, no, it's Monroe. That's Monroe. Yeah, I oh, mean, those, those damn yeah. duck balls are sixty yeah. bucks a piece. Come on now, are they really? I Shoot. thought the Doug Donnessy to play for for La Tech. No, nah, you uh, you you would be surprised how much money you can spend on freaking duck calls. Those uh those commanders <laughs> kind of like the uh. They're the Walmart version, if you will. I mean, kind of like tried and true, steady. They're great. Yeah, they're like 60 bucks a piece, man. They got some money. They need to cough that up. 
Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> plus, they the, plus they had the TV show. They made a ton of money off of that crap. Yeah, D- Dynasty Stadium. There you go. Got a ring to it. Yeah. yeah. It actually would be a be pretty cool <laughs> name, I think. You change the name from the Warhawks to the War Ducks, and you're going to dive right into it. War Ducks and the match like, What would you say? What's the bracket look like? Yeah, uh, you you have the War Ducks match up with the Oregon Ducks, and you got a rivalry built head oh, right yeah. there. <laughs> uh, well, real quick before we get to the bracket, so a final look at the RPI, and notice who has the highest RPI. Uh, it's actually Southern Miss there with thirty four sitting at thirty four. Yeah. Um, you know, but we got a couple teams all pretty close there. Look where Coastal's at, down in seventh place in the conference, but thirty fifth RPI in the country. Cajuns one behind them at thirty six. Uh, and then you've got, again, a sneaky team there, James Madison, with a 44 RPI. So everybody over there on the right is a little bit lower, and then App State on the left is kind of with those teams, really, as far as numbers are concerned, sitting down there at 76. Yeah. And the conference has four. five, five yep. teams in the top 55 in RPI in the conference going into the tournament. So five teams in the tournament are in the top 55 of RPI, and um, the five remaining teams are on the top 105 yeah. in RPI. So. Pretty competitive teams. I mean, all the way through. So it should be a good tournament. Yeah. I still don't yeah, I, the number one team in the conference doesn't have the number one RPI, but hey, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if, if there were one game difference, yeah, if there were one game difference, I could see like, oh, uh, strength of schedule in, in, in a play. Yeah. There. But, um, what, go back to the standings there for a minute. I hey, mean, they're only three I games got, off overall, but I don't know. So, yeah, I don't know. Whew. I'm looking at the RPI. So 211, there's a 305 Division One baseball team. So Arkansas State's uh, pretty far down there. Oh, I'm looking at some of these records. This is – speaking of how stupid RPI is, all right. <laughs> Maryland Eastern Shore, 0-48 on the season. I saw that one. They do not have the lowest RPI. Explain that really? to me. They do not. Have <laughs> Zero <more>. wins. <laughs> I want you to explain that to me. RPI data goes out the window for me now. That's all credibility gone. And how far? I mean, are they are they just like one up from the bottom, or are they like a few? It, it doesn't matter. They didn't win a game, and they're not the lowest. Well, no, I agree with you, but I just didn't know how far from the bottom. Uh, they are they are three hundred four out of three hundred five, but the team that's three hundred five won nine games. Nine games wow. in their game. Oh my goodness. That's yeah. yeah. I agree with <laughs> wow. you. That's yeah. ridiculous. Oh and forty-eight. <laughs> they must have been playing the Yankees or something. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. When I saw that, so when I saw that team, I, that's when I was going through the conference records. I'm scrolling, I'm like, wait, that team didn't win any games. I was like, oh no, that's just their conference losses. No, and then no, I was no. like, oh no, they didn't win any at all whatsoever. And I was like, that's that's not easy. So yeah. Anyway, RPI is what it is. NCAA, as we've been told, leans on it heavily. So expect James Madison to have a chance to get in here with any kind of respectable showing uh, in the conference, as far as I'm concerned, because of what we know. Uh, speaking of them, they match up in that top right corner of this bracket in their first game versus Georgia Southern. Um, and I have these broken down specifically in a minute. So we'll just look at this and then move on to. Um, matchup by matchup app state on the other side the 6-3 matchup against troy and then we we know southern miss and the cajuns will await the bottom play the bottom teams the bottom matchups uh as they have a one-off play in I, i'm calling it a play-in game i don't know if that's technically what they're calling it um but obviously it's it's one and done you win or you go home so it's simple um the cajuns would get the lowest remaining seed so technically they could play a number of different teams there because it depends on how some of those results go. But if Georgia State wins, that's who they get. Uh, and then Southern Miss would get whoever comes out of the other side. So kind of simple there. But now we'll uh, we'll jump over into the matchups specifically, and we're going to go in order of how the games are going to be played. So down below under the graphics, you're going to see the seeds there with the teams. Obviously, all the games are in Montgomery. Uh, but then it's going to tell you the day and the time. So, the, and all these games are being broadcast on ESPN Plus. Besides, I believe the championship setup. So, here's the first one, fellas. Anybody want to start us off with Georgia State versus Coastal Carolina? Beach chickens. 
Coastal. <laughs> Unfortunately, I think Coastal's got the got got enough to get through this first round elimination here and bounce in. Uh, yeah, okay. I just don't I just don't see uh, Georgia with enough uh, pitching really to be able to s- slow Coastal down enough. Yeah, I um, did they play each other this year? Yeah, Georgia he, he, State and Coastal. I do believe they did. Um, I won't say they did. Let me pull that up. I'm going to pull it up right now. Yes, they did. And Coastal won two games to one. Okay. So they do have that on their side. And that was recent. That was just the week before last. So just before the Mm -hmm. Marshall matchup, that's when they played recency. Is that in the head of the Panther players as they go down there to Montgomery to try and win a one-off game against them? And if it is, is it a good or a bad thing, right? We couldn't beat these guys, or is it we were damn close and we, we stand a good chance to just beat them in a one-off? Because they did it once. They beat them 10-9 in Conway as well. Uh, and obviously this will be a neutral site game. Uh, to touch on some of the statistics I was looking at before we get into further things, Georgia State, longest win streak of the season, six wins. They strung together six mm-hmm. wins. They lost – Five straight at one point, but they lost back to back 11 times, which is far and away the conference's largest back to back losing percentage, I guess, if you want to say it that way. Um, So do I think they can win this one? I do think they could. I, I, I might lean towards coastal as well, but this one is really a, it literally a coin toss for me, but do I see them going far in this tournament? No. If, if Georgia State were to win, there are too many back-to-back losses, not enough consistency for me to say that they're going to make any kind of tournament run, where I do think Coastal, with a 14-game win streak at one point in time this season, is the type of team that if they get hot, they could go on a run and continue on further. So they Now, Coastal has lost back-to-back games six times this season, so you know it has happened, um, but again... 14 game win streak. They did have an eight game losing streak, which is the longest of all the teams in the tournament. Mm. By again, by a large margin. Uh Georgia State was the second longest losing streak, like I said, with five in a row. So mm. that's why to me, there's not enough statistical data that makes me lean heavily one way or another. As we know, the 10 through four was like close all season long, right? So I think that that goes to show why it is that way again here right now. All right, the 8-9 matchup, ODU versus South Alabama. Artie, this one's Tuesday night, as that other one was a little bit of a a mid-afternoon game. Uh, Hey, guys. I have some prior commitments. I need to hop off, but I just want to leave it in good hands. Artie, it was nice meeting you. You too, Seth. Be careful. Thank you for everything. Yep. I need to hop off. I will talk to you guys later. See you, later. See you you guys. Thanks, bud. All right, well, Artie, as you, uh, as you take your explanation on what we're going to see here, I'm, I'm going to move this stage around so we, we get you up on top of it. I that. actually have uh, South Alabama, I think, is going to beat ODU in this one game. Uh, uh, just something about South Alabama this year, I just like eyeball test. Uh, I just like the, the team. Uh, I don't know why. I just I think, I think even though ODU's been playing really well, obviously, coming in here, I, I'm just going to go with uh, – I'm just going to go with Jaguars. Okay. Marv, you have thoughts on this one? I wish I had a coin in my pocket because I would flip it. If it landed on heads, I would take South Alabama. Um, I, I, I can't pick it. Yeah. I'll, I'll give you some stats and then that may help, or it honestly might make it just as hard because <laughs> these two teams are very, very similar. Yeah. So, and then nine and eight seed, you're just right there with each other. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And even even when I did this breakdown to see if I could get something that separates these two, it, it doesn't really help too much. So South Alabama strung together six wins at one point in time this season for their longest win streak. Four losses, longest losing streak, lost back-to-back games six times. ODU, only a four-game win streak, so not a, not a lot of stuff strung together. So as far as a tournament run, not likely, I don't think. Uh, but they only lost three games in a row at one point this year. They did lose back-to-back games seven times. So, did they play each other in a series this year? Good question. Let me pull that up. Let's see. 
in a Old Dominion won 15 conference games and South Alabama won 14. So, I mean, they're almost, I, 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 you know, 29 wins and then 31. So yeah, they're just, yeah, they're just almost identical in the statistical area. ODU did beat them in a series, two games to one. To one. Uh, Take it, ODU. Man. There it is. There's <laughs> more to make me feel any type of way. Uh, ODU. Yeah, I I'm looking at the scores too. So they won the first two games, eight two, eight three. Lost the last one, five three. Uh, and to note, that was done at ODU's home field, so okay. a neutral mm-hmm. site. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, to me, the, the last one was a little bit of a coin toss, but I probably lean towards coastal because of what I've seen out of them for longer durations of time this year, as far as like wind streaks and everything is concerned. This one is so close. Um, that this one is quite literally a coin toss for me. I'm going to, I probably, I'll say South Alabama because it's down there closer to home. They don't have to travel as far. They're, they're more used to the humidity, but I mean, that's, that's a reach, right? I mean, that's, that's what everyone can argue when like big 10 teams come down to start the seasons <laughs> yeah. and everything too. So does that matter much? I don't know, but if you got to go with a coin toss, then maybe those little things do add up. So I'll go with the Jags because of that. Um, but yeah, like you guys said, eight, nine matchup that it's close for a reason. So, yeah. um, Here's one that I know Marv will have some kind of an opinion on, so we'll start with you on this one. The 6-3 matchup uh, right there in the backyard of Troy. Yeah. App State is going to go down there and try and win a early game. So that that time down there is not a nighttime start. That is a 10 a.m., 9 central start time in the morning there. So I, I don't know if that favors either team, but uh, I don't know. So I'm going to be a homer. I'm going to take App. Uh Troy's coming off a series loss, just like App is. Good news is App got to pitch both their Friday and Saturday guy on Thursday. So on a Wednesday, they'll have six days rest. Uh, we'll have either one of those guys at our disposal. Uh, both of our Saturday and, uh, Friday and Saturday guys have been throwing really well lately. Uh, if we keep the bats hot, maybe Mr. Tolly uh, sends one over the fence early on. Uh, I think our series with Troy was was fairly close, if I can recall correctly. I uh, know we got one off of them. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'll look that up. How you talk. I'm going out. Wouldn't be surprised if Troy, you know, ten run orders, but um, I'm going out. Oh, I'm going to have to take uh, go against you on this one, uh, Marvin. Take uh, Troy. I, I just think, uh, like I said, I had them picked early in the year as a, as my sleeper team. Um, just a good overall team. They are. Uh, uh, so. Yeah, like you said, they came out. They got had a losing kid here at the end. Uh, I don't know what's kind of happened, but I, I expect them to get back on track here. It almost be hopefully yeah. like a little bit of a home field advantage for them as well. It should be. Yeah, they went. Sure, there'll uh, be a lot of Troy fans traveling up to Montgomery. Yeah, that's that's definitely true. They went two and six down the stretch. Hmm. But just above yeah, that, two and six a, is yeah, when they had a their lot longest. In that, I think. Yeah, yeah. They, so yeah, just below that. That two and six stretch is when they strung together eight wins in a row. So you can, you're really pick, you're nitpicking when you say that. You could divide that uh, two and six record up and add a couple of those wins before that, and you know make the numbers look how you want, right? Yeah. But um, th- there, that is there. And the Troy Trojans did beat App in Boone, seventeen to two and thirteen to five. Wow. The loss came uh, 11 to 1. So, at bats can get hot. They can beat them. As we know, uh, this is a one off thing. This isn't a series. However, you know, these two teams luckily do have the ability to lose one and not leave the tournament. So, that's when that's what both of these teams here have on their side. Even and, with that six game losing skid, Troy still won 35 games this year. Yeah. So, you know, you can't, I mean, it's just. Yeah, in 17 conference games, is nothing to sneer at either. So, yeah, I just really kind of just don't – you know, is, if Troy – if the app can get some bat swing, and they might have a shot. But they're really going to yeah. have to swing, swing away, so to speak. Yeah, that's true. And that's the great part about the tournament is you really have nothing to lose. So, you know, you can let the kids, you know, get after it a little more and be a little more aggressive in certain situations and 
Yeah, you know, I you, think you, you have nothing to lose, just win or go home. I think for a team like App, you know, for us, it's it's win the win the uh, conference tournament, and that's the only way that you have to get into a regional. Yeah, or yeah. Troy, I'm hungry for that. Yeah, we're, we're Troy. You know, assuming something doesn't go really wrong for them, you you would think that they're going to make a regional. So mm-hmm. maybe maybe we play free. They have a little bit of pressure on them. Um, I don't know. Can I play? Yeah, have that edge on you. Yeah, they ten rolled run ruled us. We ten run ruled them. I don't know. Um, Get the guys pumped up. Like, like we can beat this team. You know, we've done it before. Yeah. Coming off a six game skid. You know, yeah, you, yeah. Anything can happen. Yeah, that's what it, makes it, the tournament so fun. Sometimes you're like, oh, it's so unfair. Like, you know, you know, we just lost one game and we're out. And, but you know that it, that's the same way for everybody. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what makes it yeah. fun. Yeah, and and they. They didn't lose six in a row. Sorry, they were two and six as far as like a record in their last oh, eight. They only lost magic. three in a row twice, though. Um, so again, they down the stretch here, they do have the propensity to string a couple losses together, which is not good in a in a double elimination tournament setup. But like you said too, and like we we covered, they won the eight games in a row before that. So yeah. very capable of doing either. Um, but we got to see what Troy looks like, and until I feel. I mean, I don't feel confident in either team winning, to be honest with you. Uh, I know obviously one's going to, but as far as like if I were to put money down or say someone's guaranteed to win, this would still be a tough matchup too. And again, we said it before, we'll say it again. This this conference being jammed up in the middle like that is why we're seeing this. It's not like there's a lot of teams that were lucky to make the tournament. I mean, yeah, they're all Texas so State close. probably deserved it as far as their record was concerned, right? I mean, like you could make the argument – that the tiebreaker procedure is different and they may get in um, if they do the overall record versus the head to head against, you know, like opponents type of thing. So the argument could be made, I guess, is what I'm saying. Um, I will just for pick sake, I'm going to go with uh, with Troy here. I don't want to, obviously, with what I'm wearing, but here's why I'm going to go with them because it is double elimination. App's not out with a loss, um, but. They've set the precedent. They've beat App twice. They're playing kind of close to home. Like already said, they're going to have to have the stands packed for this one. As even if App fans travel, a Wednesday at uh, 10 Eastern time is not easy for most people to get to, besides maybe some of the parents. And even them, even some of them are going to have a, a hard time doing that. Um, so because of that factor, big time, uh, I'm going to say it's going to be hard for App to go in there and win. It'll be interesting to see what they, where they'd end up, uh, and who they'd end up playing after a loss. Um, but maybe, I, you know, hopefully I'm wrong, but I'm going to take like the, the smart choice here, I guess. Um, when you <laughs> did App not in Troy season in Montgomery last year, it's a good point. They did just say they did do that. Just looking for a repeat, though. Just repeat. Yeah. yeah, well, unfortunately, we can't end their season in this first game, but uh, we can put them close to ending their season and get them in the Very loser true. bracket. Yeah, yeah. So the next game, weirdly enough. At this point, because there's another game where you already know the matchup, but for yeah. some reason they have the next game scheduled as a matchup you don't currently know. So that will be known after Tuesday night, of course. So get, um, they'll get the highest seed out of seven through ten, correct? Yeah, correct. right. So Southern Miss versus Coastal. Yeah, the only team I can yeah. really see out of that bunch giving Southern Miss any real trouble might be Coastal. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't see Georgia Southern, Old Dominion, or South the Jags. Uh, yeah, going up against Southern, you know. So yeah, uh, if anybody, maybe Coastal. Yeah, give them a little um, trouble. I don't think Coastal and Southern Miss matched up, did they? No, they did. Oh yeah, they did down in Hattiesburg. Okay, and 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 Southern Miss swept them. Ooh, oh, so there's there's a precedent, Ooh. and um, yeah. Uh, seven. Oh yeah, I got, yeah, I got that here on the on the sweep list. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah. Didn't notice it. Yeah, the last one that they won. So the, the two games, the first two games were not close. Seven two, seven three. Well, I mean, you you say that you're just looking at the score. Um, but the last game was very close. It was a uh an early call due to travel because it was a six five seven inning game. So obviously that's not a run rule. That yeah. must have been one of those late Sunday afternoon games um that they called early weather so yeah um until we know this matchup i'm not really going to give a prediction but um i think i'm kind of like you guys i'm favoring the eagle the golden eagles to move on almost no matter who it is. <laughs> yeah. if we're saying that coastal is probably the best team that they could match up against and they've already swept them you know we'll see but uh 
that that's a hard one to say, but that that is a one thirty Eastern, twelve thirty Central time start there. Okay, so this one's a little confusing, but I, I felt when you have a ranked team, you got to show that as well. So the Cajuns are the number one team in this tournament, but they are ranked currently twenty first in the nation. Obviously, tomorrow morning that will probably change. Uh, but again, we don't know their current matchup. But if Coastal were to win, then we know that the matchup would pit the Cajuns versus either ODU or South Alabama. Uh, but if Georgia State wins, that's the shoe in to play the Cajuns. Uh, and I, I don't know. The Cajuns can't possibly play Coastal is essentially what happens here. So with yeah. that being said, just like Southern Miss matchup, I'm saying the, the Cajuns are going to beat no, no matter who they play in this game. I don't know about you guys. I agree. Yeah, we got Lafayette beating whoever comes our way in this one right here. Yeah, I, I don't think to, there's any to, much question about that. And yeah, you know, yeah, I, yeah. What, what a what a I mean, what a great year for them. You know, it's all you can say. Yeah, I, I was missing Gary's comments here while while we were on Southern Miss. So I'll throw those up. We got another uh, Southern Miss to the <laughs> top, and uh, and he's bringing out the broom. I guess uh, when we were talking about the sweep of Coastal. So um, yeah, sorry Gary, I missed those live, but. Wanted to get you on there. Um, yeah, I mean, they, Southern Miss could bring out the broom again for a couple games in this one too. But um, they they did – Southern Miss did win eight games in a row, losing only two in a row at any time this season. Um, but they only suffered back-to-back losses three times. So, again, Southern Miss is going to be a favorite in this tournament because of those types of statistics. And even better with the team we're looking at now is the Cajuns strung together 16 yeah. wins in a row. They lost only three in a row at any one point in time and only suffered back-to-back losses four times. So, yeah, you're you're looking at two three conference wins. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very consistent winnings, uh, winning teams here. So there's a reason they're one and two, right? Yeah. Um, and this was – I don't know. I, if you guys remember correctly, I mean, Southern Miss – I want to say new. They thought maybe that this was going to be a little bit of a down year after losing their longtime head coach and probably, you know, college baseball hall of famer. Um, so, you know, a, a down year is still second in the conference. So that's pretty impressive uh, for Southern Miss yeah. to pull off. And then the Cajuns, you know, kind of, I guess they won this tournament last year to get into the NCAAs. They probably had to win it to get into the NCAAs. Uh, and then they're coming in hot and the number one team this year. So, yeah, I mean, they're looking pretty good. And then uh, Ed Harold saying uh, Southern Miss will travel well to Montgomery. Yeah, I think there's what a few of the top a ranked few schools. Teams are, are, yeah. I was sorry, Dominic. I was going to say there's quite a few schools within traveling range of Montgomery. It looks like, yeah, South Alabama probably, and Southern Miss. Yeah. Definitely Troy. Troy, yeah. Yep. Yo. Yep. No doubt about it. And it'll be interesting to see if some of those East teams like uh, Georgia Southern, Georgia State bring a good number of fans. I, JMU. I would assume, yeah, that's true. And I, I would assume any team that's playing on Tuesday, it's going to be rough because that's yeah. going to be a quick, pretty quick turnaround because you're not guaranteed to go anywhere. So it'll be interesting to see how many of those four teams bring a good amount of fans. Although we know Coastal will do so. Yes. Because um, they'll probably bank on winning Tuesday. Uh, if you know that fan base, they <laughs> They expect a lot, right? You don't win a national championship and then expect to lose when you're going into a tournament. Um, all right. So the four or five matchup, the last one that we know for sure here uh, is the nightcap. I mean, this one, it says 830 Eastern, 730 Central. But, uh, we, you know, with the way some of these games go, it might even be a later start than that by the time <laughs> we get to this. Um, you've seen it with basketball and, and we've seen it in this tournament specifically just last year and probably previous years as well. But you've got two teams who faced off in football the last two years, in basketball the past two years, and now they're facing off in baseball. Uh, well, we talked about this earlier, though. James Madison swept Georgia Southern earlier this year. Does anybody think there's a chance for this one to flip in tournament action? Absolutely. I'm gonna, yeah, absolutely. I think I'm going to take actually JMU in this one. Just uh, I don't know why. I just yeah, I got a feeling that they'll they'll get the best of Georgia Southern here. Uh, no particular reason or anything. Okay. They almost, so, uh, again, almost identical teams, like the same, uh, both with 17 conference wins. Dom, so, you, said, you said JMU swept Southern this year? That's correct. Yes. That this is, this is the, this is a four or five matchup. This was two teams with the exact same conference record. 
who came down to the tie-breaking procedure, yeah. which was the head-to-head matchup. Yeah, well, even if Southern would have took one game from him, it still would have been the four-five matchup just the other way. Um, right, right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take Southern, and I think this is the uh, this is obviously the early game of the tournament, um, the the yeah. best early game of the tournament by far. Um, I'm gonna go with Southern. I don't know why. I hate to say it, but um, that's my pick. Yeah, I. I'm, I may lean that way because, like we've said, JMU has this great RPI, but they don't – there's nothing that blows me away about it. I'm not saying they're a bad team. They're very capable of winning. They've won all season long, right? They've swept App State. You know, they've swept Georgia Southern. So they've got that on their side. At some point in time, they've strung together eight wins. Um, they only lost four in a row, and they lost back-to-back games seven times, which was getting up there in the back-to-back number of losses. Um, but Georgia Southern strung together six wins at one point in time. The exact same four loss streak as JMU had, um, but Georgia Southern has lost back to back games nine times, which is the mm. second most out of oh. all conference tournament teams. So, not going to bode well for a double elimination tournament on your side there. But do I think they can win a one off game against a team who's done nothing but beat them so far this year? Yeah, I think they could. Well, it's well, kind of well, one of those things like some point the tide turns the other direction, a neutral site game might just be what they need to do so. You know what they say, it's always hard, you know, football, it's hard to beat a team twice. Uh, yep. Baseball, it's got to be hard to beat a team four times, right? <laughs> I, that's what I'm thinking, too. Yeah. Uh, and JMU's good with that small ball type stuff. Um, yeah, that's why, I always, um, that's why I'm kind of picking him in this. Uh, like, I always call a worker day team. I don't mean that in a bad way, but, you know, it's just they go out and they do what they need to do to win. That's play small ball or whatever it is. That they're fine with that. So, yeah. I think uh, – Oh, whoops. I hit the wrong button there. Oh, no, I didn't. That was that was it. But um, let me re- <laughs> reposition ourselves. Yeah, so I just confused myself there. So, But this is a good question here. We've got um, Blake jumping in. Uh, any comments on the Montgomery ballpark, hitters field or defensive? Who has the upper hand? So, um, what – so – Austin talked about this a little bit. He, he liked the ballpark for a hitter, right? Yeah, he, I think he said it was a hitter's park. Okay. I, I feel like that's going to bode well for those teams like App, who have him and Tully on their team. Um, I, I don't know. I don't, I'm trying to remember specifics from last year about like seeing a lot of home runs. I don't know if I saw a ton of home runs in the tournament, but I do know – they have a pretty monster um, wall in the outfield. I feel like that got hit to a lot. If, I, I don't know if anybody else is remembering that. I feel like I saw a lot of stuff off the wall last year. In I remember, it's by the river. That's all I kind of remember about it. Riverwalk, yeah, Kingdom, isn't that what it's called or something like that? Yeah, the the home of the Montgomery Flying Biscuits or something like that. I think Biscuits. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cool name, cool name. I've I've heard that's not a bad stadium, but I've heard that there are you know, certainly better ones um, out there. Um, so I don't know as far as like, uh, comfortability and I know Marv and I had talked seriously about trying to make it work to get down there this year, but I'm now in the middle of a move. Marv just got back from a, a hellacious travel day down there in Atlanta. Um, and obviously he's got, you know, kids, kids ball still going on. So it, it's tough, yeah. but um, I don't think anyone's announced yet where the 2025 20, tournament is going to be. So, um, okay. Yeah, with the Sun Belt, you never know. <laughs> sometimes they pick some. Sometimes they pick some odd spots. Sometimes I would love for it to be more centrally located. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, we had to pick a state and not even a school in, like Florida, for some reason. Like for yeah, <laughs> the Florida one. The Florida one is weird. I mean, Pensacola is not a bad destination overall, but apparently, like around the arena, it's not like a ton going on. Um, I've Belt. seen come to, come to come to San Antonio Sun Belt. That would be cool. I mean, it wouldn't be easy. Yeah, that's that's things thing for all the East Coast teams. Uh, yeah, it's a long drive. Uh, it, it is, but I it's a great know, destination uh, spot. You can always make a vacation out of it or something. Yeah, Atlanta, yeah. Atlanta wouldn't be terrible if there was. I mean, super easy to get to. Um, I feel like it's somewhat central. I'll probably at least it's not always like Atlanta, but New Orleans is always kind of getting a little old in the tooth for everything. Like you know, what's going to be held in New Orleans? In New Orleans, okay, but yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even be opposed to having like some traveling stuff, you know, just random, ho- you know, random school hosting it here or there. Yeah. You know, doesn't have um, to be a, a, a huge stadium for, for the championship game anyway. 
Yeah, no, it definitely doesn't. I, um, I've seen Biloxi thrown out, and Biloxi apparently has a oh, pretty nice, nice. Uh, minor league ballpark. Um, I believe Southern Miss, if Ed's still with us, he's, he's got another comment saying uh, Southern Miss has been banging the long ball recently. And I believe oh, yeah. Southern Miss actually played there in Biloxi. I think they played Ole Miss or Mississippi State, one of the two, um, earlier in the season as a, as a neutral site game there. So maybe somebody else can chime in mm. about how nice of a stadium um, is situated there in Biloxi. Obviously, Biloxi's got lots of casinos, nice places to stay. So yep. definitely, you know, a good amount to do. Kind of still centrally located, I guess. Uh, oh, no, he said, nope, it was Pearl. So they did not play there in Biloxi. If I'm not mistaken, uh, I don't think Trojan Joe has very nice things to say about Biloxi, but that could have been his bias. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it was a lot to do with his bias. Yeah, I don't think he – I think part of that's the persona there, right? Like, he he's going to tell you he hates it because he's a Troy guy and an Alabama guy, but he doesn't probably really. Because um, he – okay, Southern Miss hosted the Conference USA. So yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to a, a conference member hosting the tournament. I don't think that would be – you you would know you would at least pack out the house for a couple games. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I, I can see that people don't like that, right? But I was just thinking of people uh, were the number one seed in the tournament with home field advantage. But if it was close down to the end with travel arrangements and everything, that's just not going to work. Got you. Yeah. Okay. So Megan is saying they Southern Miss did play there. They lost to Nichols State, so it wasn't Ole Miss or, or Mississippi State. I was misremembering. So that's maybe where they where the pearl came in. Um, but they did play there in Biloxi then. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Megan, if you're going to let us know, if you went to the game, like what kind of stadium they've got there, um, I've heard good things from what I've read online. Um, I'd like to see more stadiums. I've, you know, Marv and I have been to the local Durham Bulls, which is one of the top-notch minor league ballparks um, that I've been to, and I haven't been to a ton of them, but I've been to a few. Um, Artie, you've been to a, a number of uh, minor league parks, haven't you? you yeah, said? they have uh... – uh, several like San Antonio's got a couple of ni- a nice, pretty nice ballpark. I'll be uh, the Round Rock Express up there in uh, Round Up in Austin have a really nice field. And believe it or not, the Corpus Christi Hooks have a really nice field, beautiful backdrop with the bay and the bridge and everything back there. Uh, and the campus there, Cor- uh, Corpus Christi campus is really nice it's on a little island out there, so that's really pretty. But yeah, we there's definitely some um, nice spots for minor, minor league stadiums, are actually some of the the prettier ones, actually. I like some of those a lot better than the major league ones these days. Yeah. You know, they're just like more intimate, not not so giant and cavernous and just better views all around and just funner to watch in, to be honest with you. Yeah. No, I, I'd agree from from my times with minor league. But it's just you want to stick around more often. Like you, you can go get yeah. something kind of quick. You can go to the bathroom kind of quickly, you know, and be back to your seat pretty comfortable. Like these major league ballparks, man, it's like, feel like you're walking 10 minutes to do anything. You know, it's just so big. It's like, all right. <laughs> it's yeah. It's yeah. Not, all right. We got, got some good detail from here Megan here. Yes. It's a nice stadium. Southern Miss actually hosted the conference USA tournament there. I know at least right. once, maybe more before moving to the Sun Belt. We usually play there at least once a year. So yeah, I mean, there's another easy shoe in that makes sense. A conference tournament has been held there before, not the Sun Belt. Well, obviously, Conference USA thought it was nice enough to hold a, to- a whole tournament there. Um, so, yeah, it'd be interesting to see if they'll look into something like that. And not only because maybe, you know, Montgomery's not good or anything. Like that. I'm not even saying that, but just to change it up, right? Like, yeah, just go to move it around a little bit. In a row. Yeah, exactly. Just get these kids and the, and the fans to get to experience a different area. Um, so I, I'd be in favor of moving it every two to three years to kind of keep it fresh and keep people wanting to come back. Um, and then also along the way, as we've seen, there's so many different teams that are right there in the middle. You've got some different fan bases that will even be able to experience these places as well. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I guess we, we kind of covered all the options there, right? Yeah, I feel like it. Yeah. Very nice. Um, well, you guys got anything else? I mean, Artie, I know you were showing us the Texas State uh, softball jersey you had behind you there. Do you want to talk about uh, – any any Bobcat softball here? Oh uh, well, they actually were eliminated today. I think uh, I can't. I don't, I don't know who they played, but I just saw a little snippet here before the game. I think they actually lost today. So they had a great year, a great run. Uh, every once in a while, it's nice to see another team besides like Lafayette on top in the in the round ball baseball. 
and softball. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> the yellow ball, yeah, right? hard work. And they, they did. They, they had a great slogan. I think it was like, show, show up and show out. And they did, they had a great year. So, you know, I mean, it, 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 when we watch these games, it's, it's, you know, it, it's something else when you play them and have to do that back to back. And these kids put together those, uh, be able to perform like that at a, at a high level for a whole season and win consistently in that manner is pretty impressive on, especially the collegiate level on any level, but especially the collegiate level. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they just did a great, hey, great year. So kudos to them. I'm glad, happy for them. It yeah. sucks to three. lose and go home, but you know, you can hang your hat, but you did a lot. Oh yeah. Sure. Three, uh, three teams from the Sun Belt made it. And then Texas state, Louisiana and South Alabama, they all made it to a regional final, which was today. Right. Well, fortunately, all three had to win two games in a row in order to move on. And unfortunately, yet again, I'm saying that word, none of them managed to do so. Um, Texas State went down to Texas A&M. So, I mean, that's, that's yeah. a tough matchup. Um, yeah, yeah, Louisiana yeah. went down to Baylor, who actually Louisiana was the host there in that one, and they ranked team, um, hmm. but still lost to Baylor. Uh, they did make it to that third game before that happened, um, but they but they did ultimately lose to Baylor. And then South Alabama went down twice to Florida. So Florida is the one that came out of that regional again. That's a tough matchup. Florida is routinely very good softball. Yeah, team. always very good softball team. And the A&M ladies are always pretty good too every year. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, those are all power teams. With now, a lot I want to say Lafayette was, in the, Lafayette was there as well. I'm not sure if they lost. Oh, Blake, you said, yeah, they they also they lost today, so yeah, Lafayette lost as well. Yeah, that was that that was that Baylor matchup um, down there in their home park. I was watching the game the second, so Baylor beat them in the first game of the the regional. Then both teams continued to win, um, so they matched up again. Louisiana beat them thirteen to nothing in the second game, and at least when I was watching it, it I kind of was playing with my son towards the end. So I don't know if it improved, but towards the end of the game, Baylor only had two hits. And I thought, man, they're about to play here another game, another game in like half an hour, right? You got to turn right back around and get that third game in. If it's a tie with each team winning a game. So I said, I mean, this could, this could be in the Cajuns favor, right? I mean, these girls can't, can't hit right now. They can't get a hit off these pitchers and they just scored 13 runs. But unfortunately it kind of flipped a little bit in the end and uh they couldn't win two in a row this afternoon so unfortunate for them because they they could have possibly i mean i don't know enough about softball but if you win your regional you probably have at least a good chance to host a super i would assume yeah yeah i mean as a rank as a ranked team i should say yeah i mean i think if you host a regional and win then unless you got oklahoma next door you know you should be able to host a super and Lafayette's always a – their ladies are always a softball powerhouse, so that's kind of like, you know, makes sense for them to get that. I mean, you know, like Dominic was saying, you know the fans are going to show up there. They have the facilities for it. Yeah. Et cetera, et cetera. Oh, yeah. Uh, so. And we've got college football dogs saying, do you like big balls, big yellow <laughs> balls? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we love them. The softball, softballs. We love them. Uh, Gary says uh, Kessler Federal Park in Biloxi is the home of Milwaukee Double A, sixty sixty seven, right across from Beau Rivage Casino. Yeah, uh, I've never, yeah, I've never been to Biloxi. I've been pretty dang close for work, uh, and we've done some work specifically on some of the casinos down there. Not my company doesn't construct things, but we sell stuff for the people that do. Um, so we've put some steel into the casinos down there on the coastline in Biloxi. So I do know, I, I've been told mm-hmm. that uh, Beau Rivage is a great casino to stay at if you're down there. Uh, probably not cheap, but a nice place to stay. I, I just remember the the old movie Biloxi Blues, uh, with the World War II movie with uh, uh, the guy who played Ferris Bueller. Oh, they okay. Had, like, camp, they had to go to boot camp in uh, Biloxi, Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably not a place you'd want to go and for boot camp. That had to be pretty miserable with the heat and humidity there. True. Yeah. But it was a great movie. Casino hotels are typically very cheap to stay at. All the, They just want you there. Well, I guess that's true. Yeah. They just want you to spend your money. But if they know that there's a tournament of 
baseball being held there, they might jack up the prices, right? They're going to hope that you get all lubed up at the baseball game. Your team will <laughs> yeah. come and spend some money yeah, on the slots. Luck and you come over and drop some coin at the slots on the blackjack table. That's what they want. <laughs> they make it very palatable to get in the door, and then they just absolutely rape you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Artie's going to like this line. Great line was Africa hot. Yeah, that's from the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get. I gotta get up. Artie's blowing me away with the, the movie references. I gotta catch up on some of the classics. My dad did a pretty good job of of getting me involved with old school movies, but only to some extent. Um, you know, he he put me on Animal House and some of the classics that were before my time. But uh, yeah, I mean, I say Animal yeah. House to some of my friends now, and they have no idea what I'm referencing. And I'm like, how do you not know that movie? So oh, I know. So I mean, oh, my father loved westerns, old westerns. I I mean, Have Gun Will Travel. I mean, not all of them. I watch them. I still watch some of them. Now that I get older, I'm like, okay, this is better than some of the stuff on uh, Milf Manor or some stupid stuff on TV. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. I'm probably like y'all. Like, most people probably don't even have cable anymore. You know, with, with your smart TV, it's pretty convenient. You can just watch whatever you like. That's so a good I, point. I'm always watching Sunbelt Syndicate. <laughs> yes. Well, we know you are. We, we yeah. know that's not a lie because we see you. <laughs> uh, Neil Simon went to basic training in Biloxi. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I did not know. Very cool. Very, very cool. Yeah, we you're gonna have to give us a master class on uh like a list of stuff we need to watch, a checklist. <laughs> yeah, the classics. We'll have some homework. You know what we should do during the off season? We'll we'll have to put this together in the background. We gotta do like a classic baseball movies thing. We'll just have a whole episode dedicated. Again, once this once this is all over and we could just enjoy the off season, we'll have Sometimes to Sometimes uh, I was I'm surprised uh, there's a Denzel movie called Man on Fire. In yeah. Iraq, all these movies were bootlegged. They sold them over their bootleg. And uh, the ending of the movie, you can still people get up and walk through the screen over there. <laughs> the, but, so, yes. but it be too, so I'm watching the ending of the movie, and it, you know, it just stopped on the bridge of the scene on the end of the movie. And I was like, wow, that's a unique ending. I guess they just leave it up for you to decide. And I came back to the States and watched it again. And no, they just stopped filming the rest of the movie. <laughs> but I actually figured out there's a whole other part to the end of it. So. Everybody, I get surprised every once in a while with some of the movies too. But yeah, <laughs> nothing like an Iraqi uh, bootleg movie. Oh man, yeah, that's crazy. Oh, I didn't even know people still did that with the movie, like a Seinfeld episode with the guy with the video camera in the movie theater. <laughs> yes, and uh, what is that? Uh, Mystery Theater Three Thousand or something on yeah. Sci-Fi? <laughs> sci-fi. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that nowadays, was great. Nowadays, you just bootleg the stream of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, now now it's just like a, a file on a thumbnail that someone stole from somewhere and just they didn't yeah, have to upload it. it. <laughs> That's probably like movie movie um, theaters, not theaters. What am I talking about? What, what like what everything is in LA movie um, companies? They're probably like uh, so studios, yeah. Studios, there. That's the word I'm thinking of. Movie studios are probably like disappointed that it's all digital now and it can be stolen so easily. Like back days when you yeah. had the reel, like you can't just walk out of there with some big reel to, to well, steal the movie. I wanna, you know, I'm showing my age here, but when I was a kid, like things stayed in the movie theater for like a month or two. Now it's like maybe a week and they're already back out on TV. Uh, I don't know if you guys don't have to remember dollar theaters. They yeah. play like yeah. the regular theater, then they go to the dollar. I've never seen a dollar theater in my life in the years. We got one here in uh, town. It's not a dollar anymore due to inflation. It's like four bucks. Yeah, <laughs> it's a three dollar. Um, yeah, you can watch the movies that just got out of the big theater for four bucks on a matinee. But uh, yeah, when I was a kid, we used to go to the drive-in theater. So I think I don't hardly any of those are that. I think they made a little bit of comeback during COVID, but yes, yeah, yeah I think I doubt they lasted long. Yeah, We're not the Gary best place to actually watch a movie. <laughs> yeah, Gary said four new releases on one DVD for ten bucks. Yeah, those were the days too. Now it's like Blu-rays that are. Forty dollars. If to, to, I mean, I don't even understand why they're trying to do that. Missing out for physical do, do, copy. Do, I don't even have a DVD player. I don't own one. I want to watch I, a movie. It's on Netflix or Amazon Video or whatever you want. Yeah, that's a good point. I only own one uh, because I have an Xbox and an old PlayStation that both play Blu-rays. But yeah, I mean, a, yeah. a standalone Blu-ray player? No, no, I don't have one of those. It's just because yeah, it's. In <laughs> so. Speaking Although people are me. starting to buy more physical media now because you know they're doing away with like a, you know, some classic Disney shows. You just can't, you know, they just don't show them anymore. So 
True. A lot of people, you know, you can find some of these old things are on old VHSs and, you know, DVDs and stuff. So believe it or not, people are starting to pick those up. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, you know, the price has a no physical copy of it. Yeah. This price of the streaming service isn't helping either. I feel like everyone's like, cut the cord. You know, it's going to be better. We're going to be able to pick and choose what we want. But now if you want to watch all your favorite shows, you got to have like five different streaming services just to catch. Yeah. Them. It's become more expensive than cable. It just doesn't even make sense anymore. So no, I, I will say I guess that I, that's true. But I do like the ESPN app. I will say that you know it is pretty neat that you can log on and watch any game you want from any conference, any team. That, that's pretty cool. And it's really helped the Sun Belt a lot. I think being able to do that in the fan bases and now before you couldn't do that. You know you couldn't. It was very rare to find a you know Sun Belt game or yeah on TV or something. Now you can watch all the time. It's fantastic. If I was yeah. a single man, I would. The only thing I would need to exist would be the ESPN app. That's it. <laughs> I know yeah. for a long time people said stuff like, "I'm not paying extra for ESPN. I already pay cable, and it's included." And I'm like, "Like, I'm talking to people in the triangle who who are fans of big teams, you know." And I'm like, "That's fine for you, but for me, I want to be able to yeah. watch my team all the time, no matter home or away." And like you said, Artie, like and and Marv, like it's the only thing I would need. I mean, I could not have season tickets and see all my, my favorite team's games. Like it's ridiculous. I mean, and if it's not on there, it's because it's got, you know, elevated to NFL network or like another platform that's really good. So it's like, man, that's, I'm, I'm loving it. I mean, people can hate on it, but it's also one of the cheapest streaming services. I think they've gone up a little bit in price. Um, and I wish they would stop adding some things like <laughs> they're adding like European leagues of, Figure yeah. skating. It's like, all right, I don't need all that stuff. I just, just give me this stuff in the states. You, you don't know, like, like and, uh, hockey. Not to mention it. <laughs> yeah. Not to mention too, it helps the kids and like the media departments. They get to go out and get real experience with cameras and like running a, a show, and that's what they're going to college for. So you know, yeah. it's just as slick as the with the sky boom cameras and all that stuff. No, but yeah. still, it's. I mean, for what it used to be, it's incredible. Like oh, you said, yeah. Just being able to log on and watch a bas- you know, basketball, football, baseball, softball, even soccer. But some people yeah. don't talk. I know Dominic's in the soccer. The Sunbelt Soccer Conference probably, probably actually the best conference in in the country as far as soccer goes. Yeah, yeah. You, know? yeah. you got Marshall in there, who's you know literally the number one in the country earlier this year. And a lot of what well, a few uh, SEC teams are in our con- you know in for soccer because it's that good. Yeah. Yeah, Kentucky and West Virginia. So, yeah, you're right. I mean, a hell of a soccer conference. Um, yeah. Which, which is weird also. Is it weird to anybody else, the SEC, with all the money, all the facilities they have, soccer being what you would think about as being one of the cheapest sports because it doesn't really involve that much equipment, and the SEC doesn't offer it for their – I'm mean, just blown yeah. away by that. Don't surprise me. Marv, getting, bring in money. That's what yeah. they're it in. True. Marv, uh, I was going to bring up, like, I saw a little video of some students walking out of a – it was at Duke, and I was like – Duke and I, and they they have a graduation on the football field, not in a stadium or anywhere in condition. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like yeah, that that's kind of subpar for a private university. You think yeah, you wouldn't have a graduation out on a oh. open, one hundred degree football field. Oh. Even Texas State does it in cycles in a in the Strahan Arena. <laughs> Don't get us started on subpar facilities at Duke. With the- it really is for. A, a school of their magnitude. You just in your mind, you think Duke like they're going to spend money on stuff. Marty, but, their yeah. baseball field. All right, the turf is nice. Their baseball stadium. Yeah. I've been to nicer high school baseball stadiums. It's a yeah. dump, and they're a top fifteen program. All the money in the world, and their baseball stadium. I, I think we were talking last time. If they were, they can't host a, a super, can they? Because how crappy their stadium is. Yeah, I don't think yeah. they can host the regional. You know what's funny is that you're saying that right now while we're still on because when I was at the Durham Bulls game, there was ACC officials, and the reason it was not hard to find is like their hat said ACC, ACC <laughs> here, and there was somebody from the Durham Bulls walking around like three, four, five people showing them different – and I'm thinking that they were getting prepped for if Duke hosts – they have to play there at the Durham right Bulls here. athletic park because they cannot play at home. They're I mean, – yeah. But if, Who the was it was it home, if the Bulls were scheduled to be home that weekend, like Major League Baseball is not going to say, hey, next highest level to the show, you got to move yeah. the series so that <laughs> yeah. play yeah. here. It's not happening. Well, and I did check. They're the weekend that they would host the regional, right, coming up. 
yeah. um, they would be away. So it would work out. And I, I think that's why the ACC officials were likely there. It's possible that that's not what it was for. It's maybe ACC is going to host the um, conference tournament in Durham next year, you know, because they have done that before. The ACC has hosted the, the whole conference tournament in this location. So it's not impossible that they're looking ahead to next year. and It has nothing to do with Duke. But my thought process was it had to do with Duke and they're coming to make sure everything's up to snuff and you know, they've got what they need. Uh, and they wanted to see it being done as the game was going on, I guess. I don't know. And that's one good thing about the Sun Belt is, you know, even including Georgia State now, they're going to get a stadium. But people, the schools have invested in their facilities. So I could, could add know. host. If, if we I don't know. That good. I don't know if our stadium is – our stadium is newer. Uh, I just don't know if it's big enough. I don't think it's big enough if I had to guess. And I honestly don't know if it would make sense for them to ever expand in hopes of that, because let's be honest, like app would be hosting like once every blue moon. I'm about to say we, we, we'd have to have five plus years of major success for them to even consider doing that. And, and honestly, I bet anything, if they were to do it, they would just try and go down to Hickory. Hickory. Yeah. They go to the Crawdad stadium. Yeah. Which I mean, not I, they would have the same problem possibly like, like they can't use it, but I would assume that they would try to do that. And then, Maybe they could go to Winston if Hickory doesn't work out. You know what I mean? They, yeah. They'd have other things where if they ever got to that point, they would just host in a stadium that's set up. and it would, just, go. it would just suck for the kids that if you're successful enough to host, that you right. couldn't be on your home stadium. Yeah. That's App or Duke, and, and shame on Duke for having all that money and not investing it in that. They got a great program down there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm going to get off my soapbox. Well, no, mm-hmm. but, and it makes sense. It's not necessarily just them, too. You're talking about multiple teams like Georgia State is in that same same realm. Um, not in that they have endless amount of money like Duke, but you're talking about like some of the stuff that they could fix up and make better seems to be it wouldn't cost that much, right? Like, you know, Marvin and I were there. I mean, they had portage. They didn't even have bathrooms. They had no running water of any. Yeah, you, were, you were saying even the paint and stuff wasn't like, you know, yeah, nice and things like that. So, yeah, they didn't have, they didn't have concession stands like you couldn't get. They, oh man! Not even they, people walking around with beverages. Like, I mean, they, they had like a cart that had oh, like okay. uh, like Pepsi's. I, I don't think you could get alcohol there, but uh, mm-hmm. like there wasn't hot dogs and pizza, hot dogs or and God, things like that. Or nothing. Uh, and yeah, like porta potties, and I, I don't know. It was just oh. old and dingy, and it, it, yeah. it was one of those things where you get there and you look around and you're like, how 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 is this even how is this possible? feasible? Yeah, yeah, possible. <laughs> yeah, because I've I've been to their their football stadium and, and it's old and concrete, but like the concession stands are pretty nice. They got like new new signage, uh, bright. You know, it's all lit up very well. You walk up, there's lots of options. Um, there's obviously plenty of bathrooms. Then you go into the cathedral of the basketball arena, and you know it's old, it's small, um, yeah. but the attached to it, if you want to go in the pregame, and I, I'm pretty sure this is open to anybody. Um, you can walk in where they serve. They don't serve alcohol within the basketball arena, but they serve it in the concession area that's beside it, which has got like the little Hall of Fame and everything. I mean, that's one of the nicest athletic rooms I've ever been in. But then you walk literally right up from there to the baseball field, and it looks like no one's touched it since the 70s except for the turf field that's kind of brand new. And it's just I get yeah. the reason they keep Cameron the way it is, like the nostalgia and like all the history there. Zero excuse for the baseball facility. Yeah. And that's enough about Duke. Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> Gotten off on a tangent. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, that's kind of the cool part about what we do and what we're a part of is that we don't have any schools that are outliers like that, right? We don't have a single private institution. So we don't have one school yeah. that's going to be unfairly ahead of everyone else as far as the money advantage is concerned. Um, I mean, that happens, but that's more of a natural thing, right? We have 14 yeah. public institutions that are all roughly similar. I mean, there's nothing that's, you know, sticking out like a sore thumb. I mean, I think Georgia State may have the largest population of students undergrad wise. Um, then we discuss that a lot of that's commuter and online. Right. So when you talk about students living on campus, they're probably still very similar to the rest of the league. I, I, I think that's kind of what makes this so much fun. Like there's not somebody in this conference that like everybody loves to hate, you know, like if Liberty were to come in, I think everybody would love to hate Liberty, you know, or uh, I don't know. Yeah. I, it, Lane's a private institution too, right? <laughs> like if not that they would ever leave American, but if they were to come in, it's just like you have all this money, you have all this ability and you're coming mm-hmm. in here. 
Like, I just think everyone would hate something like that. So I like the fact that we have 14 teams, 14 fan Absolutely. bases that are all kind of roughly, you know, blue collar, hardworking people in the background. Right. So that's what, that's what makes all this so much fun. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, all right. Well, after we got off all of our soapboxes uh, there, <laughs> that was a good time. So, yeah, we do need to put together a little uh, fun uh, classic baseball movie episode or something. We'll, we'll have to talk about that. Obviously, again, once we get out of baseball re- uh, regular season and postseason here now. But, um, yeah, we'll, we'll have to put together something else, too, um, because this tournament is going pretty much every day up until this weekend. I don't foresee us having another episode on like a Wednesday like we normally do because there'll be baseball to watch and everyone will be yeah. tuning into that instead of listening yeah. to us. Talk. Um, but we will definitely wrap up everything after the weekend and we'll be back at you guys next week for sure. Uh, for Artie, Marv, Seth, and myself, thank you guys very much for tuning in. Thanks to college football dogs, part of dog TV. And again, W energy down below SB syndicate at checkout to get yourselves a little 10% discount on the way out, and we will see you guys next time. See ya.